Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. So let's start. First thing, let's set up our composition. I'm going to name it kinetic type 17 and I will make it 1080 by 1080. 30 frames per second, 8 seconds duration and press OK. Let's start with our type tool and let's write something. Align it to the composition and press P to open the position properties. Now, let's mark a position keyframe and let's move it to text a little bit to the left. Then, let's move our timeline needle one second, mark a new keyframe and move the text to the right. Move the timeline needle to two seconds and let's copy and paste the first keyframe. Before adjusting the animation curves, let's press the Alt key on our keyboard and let's click over the position stopwatch to open the expression editor. And here we are going to write a loop expression, loop out and semicolon. Perfect. With our keyframes selected, let's click on the graph editor icon. Here, let's choose the keyframes again and transform them to easy and ease. Let's adjust the curves Beziers to make a more dramatic animation and give it a little preview to see how it looks. Great. Now the cool part starts. With our layer selected, let's press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate the layer. Now select our new duplicated layer, open to see its attributes and do the same thing with the primary layer. We need to find a text property and while holding the Alt key, click over the stopwatch of the search text and using the Pick Whip tool, connect it to the search text of our primary layer. This will let us change the text in the primary layer and it will update any other copies we have in our composition. With that done, be sure to have our new layer under our first layer. Now let's delete the keyframes and the expression of our new duplicated layer. Then let's go to our timeline and right click and go to new and choose new object. So what is this new for? We will write an expression on our new duplicated layer that will create a delayed effect in this copy and the other ones we are going to make afterwards. And this new object, which we will name delay control, will have a few expression sliders to control our copies, delay values and positions. So let's name this new delay controller and still with the new selected, let's go to the effects and expression controls and choose slider control. Now let's click on the slider effects and press Ctrl or Command D two times, so we have three sliders. With that done, let's start naming our sliders. I'm going to name the first one Delay, the second one Distance X and the last one Distance Y. And that will be it in our null for now. On the Effects Control tab, click on the little lock icon to keep this effect control always visible. And now let's select our duplicated text layer. And while holding the Alt key, let's click over the stopwatch of the position attribute and start writing a new expression. So let's go. The first line will be var leader equals and using the pick whip tool, select our layer with the keyframes. And what this variable does, it will define which layer our new copies needs to follow. Great, now let's create the variables that will get their values and information from the sliders we just created in the null object. Let's start with var delay frames equals and using the pick whip tool, select the delay slider in a null object. Another one, var distance x slider equals, and using the pick whip tool, let's get the slider for the distance x. One more, var distance y slider, and using again the pick whip tool, let's select the distance y slider in our null. Great, we are making progress. Now let's make the variables that will conduct the calculations of the delay. The first one will be var frame duration equals this comp frame duration which means the duration of one frame in seconds. I will need this because I like to have my delays based on frames and not on seconds, which make it easier for me to have a better control of the animation. Then another variable var delay equals open parenthesis index minus leader period index close parenthesis times delay frames times frame duration. This was a long one, but now our delay will be calculated in frames and not seconds. I think it's worth it. Let's make another variable to calculate the time to sample our primary layer position. This is a simple one. Just var delay time equals time minus delay. Now we need to sample the main layer position at the delay time. So let's write var leader position equals leader period transform period position period value at time, open parenthesis, delay time, close parenthesis, semicolon. Ok, don't worry, we are almost there. Next, we must calculate the distance to offset the duplicate layer positions. 
var distance x equals distance x slider times open parenthesis index minus leader period index close parenthesis and semicolon. Another one var distance y equals distance y slider times open parenthesis index minus leader period index close parenthesis and semicolon. And we are almost done. We just need to add another line and that will be it. This line will be applying the distance to the x value and y value of the leader position. So let's open brackets, leader position, open brackets again, zero, close brackets, plus distance x, comma, leader position, open brackets, one, close brackets, plus distance y, close brackets, and semicolon. And that's it. I know sometimes this can be a little bit hard to follow, but don't worry, I will leave the expression in the video description, so you can just copy and paste it. But remember to connect the sliders and update the initial variable of your primary layer. And cool, this is almost it. But before we play this, let's just change this text visually. I'm going to make it fill black and add a white stroke. So we can see it better under our primary layer. And with that done, let's press Ctrl or Command D to make a few more duplications. And as you can see, now the new copies use the same expression and have their position updated. If we go to our delay controller new, we can change the delay frames and the distance in X and Y, and it will update automatically, giving us lots of control for experimentation and design. And that's basically it. Let's give it a little preview and appreciate the work we've done today. I love using expressions. I love the control they give to us to build systems that are easy to change. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If this is your first time here, remember to like and subscribe and to check my other kinetic type tutorials. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye.